Let's revive this channel the same way I started it. At the end of the previous video I said I would let you decide what game I was going to make. And you guys submitted a lot of ideas. Some of them good, some of them not good, and some of them just... What the f Anyway, after picking the ones you suggested the most, I created a Discord poll and you guys decided that I am going to make a horror game. If you want to have control over what destroys my mental health, you can just join my Discord and have a vote in polls like these. So, let's look at what I have from the previous video. And throw it all away. Because that code is trash. After an emotional farewell, I started writing the code again from scratch. And before I knew it, I had a basic rendering working again. And now I needed to figure out how I'm going to make a horror game. First, we needed an environment. So I called Franta, who you might know from the video where we went to a Kurzgesagt meetup, and forced him to voluntarily create a map for our game. And while he was voluntarily working, I decided to work on another thing. Lighting. You see, no horror game is a good horror game without good light work. But this isn't like placing down a point light in your engine of choice. This actually required some math. We already established in my previous video that models in 3D graphics are made up of vertices, which make faces. I can tell the PS1 to set a certain color to each vertex and it will interpolate these values and color the entire face. So what we need to do is calculate the brightness of the individual values based on their distance and direction from the light point. From there we can use some simple calculations to determine what the brightness of that vertex should be. Vertices have something called normals. This is basically just a vector which is perpendicular to the face. This vector is used for all lighting calculations even in modern era 3D. This allows us to have pretty smooth lighting on the PlayStation. Okay, so let's implement it. Should be easy enough. Oh wait, my vertex indices are messed up. <laughs> so now that I had some fancy lighting and a maze to contain the horrors of my optimization, it was time to do... well, optimization. Right now we are rendering the whole maze every frame, which is not good for the PlayStation. So, a correct solution would be to use space partitioning and render only the faces which are in vicinity of the player. But since I'm already way behind schedule, I decided to just calculate the distance from the player and not to render the faces which are too far away. You see, now the frame rate is, well, sufferable, but we have the maze just appearing in front of us. That breaks immersion, and since I'm going for the title of the most immersive PSX horror game of the year, I'll have to create a complex and sophisticated fix. There we go. So our maze right now has one very annoying thing about it. You can walk through walls. And I don't know about you, but I can't just pass through walls whenever I need to go for a fridge heist. So, we need to create a collider. Now, what is the usual way of programming collisions? Well, no, I'm just detecting if the player is above a floor face and not letting him continue if he's not. So now I have a collider. Yes, it lets you see through walls, yes, it sometimes stops you in the middle of the hallway for no reason at all, but it, well, kind of works, and that's good enough for me. But things seem a bit too... silent. So we need to add in sound. But what sounds could our horror game make? Well, we can definitely see that our main character is walking on what seems like a stone floor, so there should definitely be some footsteps. But since I don't have loud enough shoes, I needed to improvise. So I just pulled out my cameraman out from the basement and abused him once again to help me record the sound of the footsteps. Good enough. Let's go. Let's go. And this is the point where one very, very, very important person comes in and I'd like to address him. His name is Spicy JPEG and he's basically the guru of PS1 programming, like everything about the PlayStation like he knows it, down to the every single bit on the data bus. And the thing is that without him, none of these videos would be possible. Whenever I was stuck on something, he was always there, like always. And he always helped me out. He 
never let me down. So I would like you to look at his GitHub. He has some very pretty work. And if you're thinking about getting into PlayStation programming, you should definitely look in there because there is a lot of tools which will help you start out. He's an important member of the community. So thanks, man. Speaking of the community, you should definitely join the PSX Dev Discord server, where you can find a lot of good people which will help you get into PlayStation programming. I just want to warn you that you should know something about C programming and hardware before you get into this. It's not as easy as I make it look. Well, the link is down below in the description, so maybe we will get some new faces in the community. So now we have a level, a light, collisions and sound, but we still can't call this a game. Well. It doesn't have any gameplay, there's just no goal, no way to finish it. So for now I decided to add in something simple and leave this question for a future part because I don't want to finish this game in one part, I want this to be a continuing thing. So what should a horror game have? Well there should be some other characters beside the main protagonist, right? So I asked my friend Matej who you might know from the Formula RC video or as my main admin on my Discord server, please join to create a simple enemy for the game. And he created this super wholesome ghost. So to give this game at least some gameplay, I spawned five ghosts across the entire maze, which you need to find in order to win the game. But I feel like having the ghost disappear when you approach it is a little too boring. Yeah. Now that's better. And after I added a little victory chime, yeah. I can say that I am about done for this part. But there's still one last thing to do, and that's to test the game out on the real hardware. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I have tried this before, and over the development I have developed one small issue with the sound, and you will see what that is in a minute. Okay, so you can see that the game actually boots up, but there's one leftover sound in the SPU, is this. And for some reason, um, my code doesn't replace the sound in channel 0 by my step sound. Yeah, I'm not going to solve this now, because everything else works, like I can even show you. Ah, that's an annoying sound. Now, you can see when I pick up the ghost, Like, the victory sound still works, but I have just no idea what that could cost. <laughs> so, you are welcome to submit pull requests on GitHub because of this. So, yeah, hope someone finds out because I have no idea. Hey, there's one more addendum. Uh, some of you called me a liar because the diode on my PlayStation didn't really light up. You can't really see the diode when you're looking up and front on it. So, when I go up... You see, the diode does light up, so please stop calling me a liar. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm putting like a lot of effort into this, so yeah, please, thank you. So that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. I certainly did. Leave a like, subscribe, join my Discord server, and next time around we're going to do some optimization, and hopefully you won't have to wait three months again. Bye!